What is going on guys? We are back with another video today and we are doing another rebuild this time of the Tennessee Titans, a team that is still ahead of the division because of, well, just their division being probably the worst in football. I'm trying to think. The NFC East is kind of bad again, but at least the Cowboys are kind of the front runner. The Titans, they're the number one team here easily. But when you look at that defense, it is not something that I would expect to hold up well in the postseason, even though they look like they're going to get a spot there. Uh, of course, they are 3-2, and two, in fact, not 2-2. Two and two. But let's go over the team just for rebuild and real life sake. Once again, offensive line, not a bad-looking group on paper. Uh, I'm not 100% sure how they played in real life, but Derrick Henry has had some pretty good games, so I'd imagine they've played pretty well. Derrick Henry is, you know, obviously an above-average back, very durable, which makes him super valuable. Julio Jones, definitely not off to the start that they were hoping for, but at the same time, the style of play they have, it's kind of frustrating to watch as a, you know, a, you know like a good player fan, a fan of like Julio Jones, uh, just to be like a blocking type guy. Obviously, he's had a couple of good games, but injury concerns again. Uh, A.J. Brown has had a pretty lackluster season so far. Tannehill's doing what Tannehill usually does, just manage the game, uh, you know, basically just manage the game of course a guy like Tannehill on the uh the Vikings or you know the Bears of years past might have been Super Bowl champions you know the the Bears offense was so bad and so detrimental especially from the quarterback play that they literally lost games for them which is just insane to think that the defense could win them a game but they would end up losing them the game overall uh, but of course let's look at the defense which is Made up of a couple of really good overall players and a high potential group here. I don't think Farley can literally play this season, so I'm not going to put him as a starter. But on paper, they look all right. However, in real life, they have not played up to standard. Rashawn Evans, I'm pretty sure, has played really poorly. Same with Jayon. Bud Dupree, who hasn't even played that much, didn't look great when he did. The signing right out the gate. I don't think there was a single player on the planet or, or person on the planet that thought that this was a good idea. Um, maybe Steelers fans liked it because obviously it meant like, okay, well, we would have loved to have debris, but since he made that much money, it makes a lot of sense that we let him go. Uh, you know, maybe you feel better about your front office, I guess. Um, but yeah, Simmons has been okay. Uh, I believe Bayard has really been the only great player on the defense. I think Harold Landry has been okay as well, but overall, this has been a very underachieving defense that in recent years past, I know the cornerbacks have changed a little bit around here, but They've actually been a pretty good unit, so a little surprising to see them regress like this. Of course, kind of reminds me of Dallas a little bit, having like the best linebackers in the league and then just absolutely falling off the face of the earth, you know, looking at Jalen Smith being released and all that. Of course, this is also the first uh, rebuild I'm doing with the scouting update active, uh, which I do not know why we don't see it. Do we only see it at week seven? I used... Oh, this could actually not work. Did I sell because I used real-life rosters? Okay, I didn't. Okay, so I obviously use real-life rosters that have the pre-existing injuries and all that on. Uh, but obviously, this is the scouting update. I made a video on it. You know, kind of a, a glancing video. Uh, there's a lot you can do to go in-depth. And, and honestly, I'm going to be factual with it. It gives me a headache. There's so much. I don't know if I would say too much, but maybe the main reason why I would say too much, though, is because it's really clunky looking at players. Like, if I want to look, let's be honest, a lot of us look at 40 times and all that. It's probably like a 75% of what we value these players on, obviously. Um, there's kind of a reason why it exists, obviously, unless you have time to watch film 24-7, which doesn't exist in the game anyways. But to look at that, you have to click on the player, then you have to click this, and then if you didn't see any of their skills, you have to click over here, and that's per player. You know, that's every single player. I wish it was all on, like, maybe the main screen. I'm not sure how they would do that, but um, the player notes, maybe, I don't know, dude. But it just, it doesn't work, right? Like, it's just too, too much clicking, you know? I get it. Like, there's a lot of in-depth, but, like... This works maybe in an actual franchise, but for rebuilds, it drives me nuts. For the first season, we'll do it all manually, but going forward, we may do it auto, which is kind of the way I think a lot of us, uh, you know, rebuilders would play the game as. Do it on auto and then manually uh, look at some of the players once the draft actually hit. Quarterback is definitely on the list for Tennessee, just because uh, Ryan uh, Tannehill is not the youngest guy in the world, and especially in Madden, he will not last much longer. 
Of course, I don't know exactly. I'm already getting a headache. I, am, I literally am already getting a headache. But Cameron McMullen, uh, very interesting. I don't think he really fits what they want to do in Tennessee. But if he's a good quarterback, he's a good quarterback, right? I'm not going to deny them just because, you know, he's always maybe a guy that can fit in a read option scheme, which really doesn't exist, or like a pistol scheme, I guess. Um, but, yeah, that's not really what they're doing here in, in Tennessee. They're handing the ball off to Henry and letting him win the game, uh, especially with that offensive line as well. Wide receiver is not that big of a need right out the gate. Tight end is, though. So if there's anyone halfway there, I mean, we can't really even do anything here, so I'm just going to skip it. Strong safety, Brandon Telfer is looking pretty good, so we definitely want to get him uh, evaluated if we can. Who is a second to third grade talent. Once again, wouldn't know much. He's 23. Wouldn't know much until we actually see, like, the combine and all that and potential, uh, well, just potentials. Uh, but let's look at the scouts because, obviously, technically I didn't do this manually. Tight end is a need, but the tight ends suck. So we're going to remove this man. Oh, can I not? So I guess I'm not doing a manually. Suppose year one, we're just going to let the game do it then because, of course, we started a little late, unfortunately, because I wanted the active stuff. I wanted the, uh, all the injuries and all that for the first uh, year for this moment, I suppose. But, yeah, we'll uh, we'll go back to it in a moment so we have a scouting national focus, which I don't know if that allows us to actually change anything, but uh, I suppose, where's the, uh, okay, well, the tight ends just suck in general, um, but so left end defensive tackle is good, but left end sucks there. Can we not change where everyone goes either? I guess not. We're just, we're just going for it. But re-signings, Rashawn Evans, maybe not playing super well in real life, technically, but as far as Madden goes, I love him. Super strong. Maybe even the highest hit power for maybe other than Jamal Adams. I think he might even have higher hit power than Jamal Adams. Another middle linebacker, Jayon Brown. I mean, I don't like to pay too much. I don't want every single line, you know, player to be re-signed. I mean, I would love to, but that's not kind of how it works. Harold Landry, 25 years old. Still young. Has time. And he's pretty good. He's, he's good enough. So 28 mil left to work with. Tannehill, really, I mean, replacing him would be huge for this team's future, but... It is what it is. Ben Jones, probably going to let him go. So O-line is definitely something you need to draft. Tackle center specifically. And yeah, a bunch of backups outside of that. A lot of backups. Oh, holy crap. Hope that freaking safety uh, is like able to be freaking focused on. Harold Landry, breakout. No, that would have been so clutch timing, dude. And yes, we got the bye week. Or well, not the bye week, but the playoff spot as expected. The division, you know, not really that great. Let's take a look at our numbers. So, uh, well, let's actually take a look at our win-loss. Uh, so we did not force any wins in favor of us outside of the uh, real-life one against the Jaguars. And uh, they are 5-3-2, and three and two, right? I'm pretty sure they beat them, right? Uh, but let's take a look at the stats and awards. Uh, of course, it appears that Mr. Derrick Henry went off, as you would expect. Over 2,000 total yards, uh, which is absolutely nuts. 17 touchdowns. I think people would respect him after that, right? Uh, receiving really bad, but that's kind of what you expect. This is kind of what it seems like they want, right? Good, big wide receivers on the outside blocking, and one of the guys that just do enough to, to make the pass attack scary enough to where the uh, the defense has to respect it, and then Derrick Henry just murders them. Uh, Harold Landry with 11 sacks, uh, interceptions, four for Fulton, could go up in dev, never know. Randy Bullock was awful. Uh, Kern was okay, as he always is. And uh, we had some pretty good rankings. So MVP of the league goes to Mahomes. Any chance we would have won something? Asante Samuel, Rookie of the Year. Derrick Henry, best running back, as you would expect. And with him winning best run, uh, running back, obviously, it kind of goes by overalls mainly for the O-line award. But it would have been nice to see one of our guys, like, you know, top two, top three, considering they obviously helped. Uh, but going up against Baltimore, a team that also likes to run the ball, maybe not as effectively technically, but you can do a lot of things with Lamar Jackson. In the bedroom as well. Going to the end of the game, this would be a very big shock if we even just won this game and went on to win it all. As of course, uh, this is a very solid team in, on Madden paper, but lots of players still missing, lots of positions missing, and of course in real life, once again, kind of struggling, kind of struggling, uh, at least on the defensive side of things. And you can see here right now, defense is clutching up hard. 27 to 13 against Baltimore. I mean, that's pretty good. 30 to 20, we'll take that every day of the week. We controlled the game, defense locked up, and ultimately we move on. Both quarterbacks should be ashamed of themselves. Derrick Henry went off as he does. Uh, receiving, wow, nine for negative five. I don't think I've ever seen that. And a touchdown on top of it to make it even weirder. 
That is something. That is insane. Bud Dupree with two sacks. It's like a half of what he had in the regular season, I think. <laughs> wow, what a freaking decision. Do you have fun? Hell yeah, I did. Whoa, why is it so fast? It's like they know people are going to say no, and they're like, okay, well, let's skip it around. Derek Henry, does he really need power back? I mean, trucking and stiff arm are good. I'm going to go elusive back. Screw it. Get a better chance at Excel, speed, and all that. Which he did. Excel and agility. That's a win. He's a beast. And, of course, the Chiefs. We actually have a home game against the Chiefs, though, which is a bit shocking. We're only an 81 overall. They're an 85. This is something I can't imagine goes well for us. Carolina moves on in the NFC side, so they're in one of the championship spots. If we win this game, that would be not so. 3-0, 3-7. Defense, come on, keep it up. Keep it up, 13-7. Come on, offense, stop sucking. Defense has done as much as it can here. 21-13, and this is where the Titans' offense just chokes it. I'm not saying that the defense is perfect, but they have absolutely done enough to win this game, considering who you're playing against here. And, of course, that will be the dagger. Not a bad year one, though, 31-20. Uh, you know, you would expect this to be a playoff team, like we said before, especially considering the division. Uh, but to get where we did and almost actually beat the Chiefs, we actually had a bit of a chance there. It's pretty impressive. Pretty impressive for year one. This is more of like a reload rebuild, whereas, you know, I mean, the team isn't, once again, perfect. There, there's a lot of positions to fill, but there's a lot of core positions that just work. You know, not having to get a running back, not having to get a wide receiver or number two wide receiver. The O-line's kind of intact. There are a lot of positions, but at the same time, I feel like with a couple of good drafts, maybe some executed, uh, you know, perfectly executed free agent signings, maybe a corner, we might be able to get into a Super Bowl within, you know, three years. We'll see. So we have the Chiefs and the Cowboys in the Super Bowl, probably the Chiefs, but the Cowboys have a chance, and the Cowboys do win, which I love to see. Uh, let's take a look at any potential debits we had. We got to 80 overall flat with some of the regressions and obviously losing morale. Uh, offensively, there was no dev ups, unfortunately. Defensively, we had a few, actually. We had Fulton go up. What is he? He's 23. Fair enough. And then, obviously, uh, Harold Landry. Uh, he's obviously 26. What is ratings? Didn't really go up in overall, unfortunately. Um, what's his ability? Superstar X, uh, dev, dev, obviously. No outsiders, which is interesting. Fair enough, I guess. Fair enough. Now, the real question is... Wait. Did we not sign Evans? Wait, what could be better? Salary and length are great, but the bonus could be better. Okay, I mean, at least it's about the same price anyways. It's not, like, crazy. And really? This game is bugging, dude. Whatever, 12.7. Welcome back. Could have sworn we re-signed him. I guess not. Uh, ben Jones didn't really regress too hard, but I think we could do better. Or even just him again if we had to. And a lot of these other guys, I think we can also do better. And once again, if not, we can get pretty much similar. Yo, uh, why is Tannehill making so much money? And of course, this contract is just devilish. This is so bad, dude. J Janoris Jenkins isn't crazy savings, but he's only a 73. It's still something. Might as well. And we also have this guy. I mean, I'm trying to save as much as we can. Forget that whole, uh, you know, a tactical signing and all that. We're just going to take the L and uh, pretty much just hold on to what we have. So many bad contracts here. I mean, not... I've seen worse, but considering we have to sign next season, I don't see us being able to afford everyone. So, realistically, your best bet is just saving every dime you have here. Why do they sign? Why do they pay so much for Bud Dupree? Like, that is just... That is the biggest L I've ever seen, honestly. That is worse than Brock Osweiler. It's not, but it's pretty close, dude. Yeah, like I said, I, I mean, clutched up with Fulton going to star, but we just can't sign anyone here. We just, we can't. Gotta save it all, and even then, we probably aren't going to be able to sign the guys we have. So of course, the combine results are in. I can't remember what draft pick we have, but uh, I suppose we'll take a look at the mock draft. That'll show us what draft pick we have. So, uh, the Patriots picked one go for a quarterback. Uh, where are we? We are down to number five, uh, 25. DT is there, obviously a position of need. So we'll, uh, we'll keep that in mind. Definitely keep that in mind. But overall, I think that safety has got to be up there for us. I don't know how well he was scouted, but Telfer, 42%. Does it show us anything? The combine finished, obviously. 4 5 It'd be nice to see him clean that up a little bit with the pro day. Uh, man coverage sucks. Block shedding's insanely good. Play, play rack is pretty good. 
he's got to be one of the guys we focus, right? Like, there's just no way around it. Curtis Hitchens ran a decent 40. Nothing insane, though. Ooh, this guy could be a god. Riley Truman, we have to focus on. Very good 40 time. Seems to be a good deep threat uh, player. He's, he's on the list. Oh, this tight end actually uh, made his way up pretty high on the list. Like, we had a bunch of second and thirds, and now uh, you have that guy. He's like a first to second. 4 six, eight. This guy looks really good. We really need a tight end. I think he would debate putting him on the list here. I want to make sure that there's not some other guys. There's a lot of talented tight ends here. Like, they're not the best I've ever seen, but, uh, I mean, they definitely have a lot of potential. 6-3. Uh, I mean, that guy's not that bad either, but I think the guy we would go for is Dante Hendricks. So we have the Pro Day results. We'll take a quick look at, uh, you know, the guys that we had favorited. Uh, I'm really curious to see some of these, you know, increases or decreases. Uh, a little bit faster for McMullen. Uh, Brandon Telfer. See, come on, get to like a 5-4. Okay, a 4-5-4 four, four is what I was hoping for. He did improve, but not by a whole lot. We'll see. Uh, Riley Truman, another guy that I believe was, you know, decently fast, right? Yeah, he improved quite a bit, actually. Um, anyone else that would have done something? Maybe Dante Kendricks. Let's see if he actually improved. Hopefully not decreased. Ooh, he is a lot faster than he once was. Did then, then didn't change his stock, though, which is a little surprising. So we now have the private workouts, which is a very, very important time for us. Uh, with that being said, I think you have to put Telfer on it. Telfer, Dante Kendricks, I think you just got to take a shot on. I really do. Um, Dante Kendricks, Kerr, and then do you put the quarterback on there, McMullen? Round one to two, I think that's good enough. Now, hopefully our guys that we actually put on there did show us more completion, which they did, so... Cameron McMullen has a, uh, what is it called? A deep, B mid, does not show the short throw on the run. Where is the throw power? Does, does it not just show that at all? Fast kind of guy. Uh, throw power is great. Not elite, but very good anyways. I mean, if he's there at our pick, I might have to take him. Uh, Telfer, of course, skills. Um, where is his zone coverage? Does it not show zone? Zone is C, so... He's not looking great. I'm going to be honest. He does not look great. And then where was the last guy? Who was the last guy? Oh, yeah. Kerr, the other guy, the other safety. Uh, let's take a look. So uh, very fast. Blazing speed. Do not show the man. Zone is great. Catching looks good. I mean, you're taking a risk on either of the safeties. I think it really just comes down to who's available when we're picking. Which, with that being said, I think we're just going to go right into it. We do have 26, so the chances of really any of those guys being there is kind of low. Uh, but we're going to move on to it, so pause. Really, I'm not a fan of the fact that they don't show overalls. I, I don't see the reason why they wouldn't. It really changes literally next to nothing. Uh, but McMullen is there. Is Kerr there? Kerr is not there. You have a chance at a franchise quarterback. Is he the franchise, though? I don't know. The physicals, I mean, he's got a lead on a lot of stuff, a lot of uh, physicality stuff. Um, his skills look decent, you know, really good deep ball, good medium. You would assume if he has a good deep ball, he's got decent throw power. Uh, take calculated risk, beautiful spiral, quick to throw out the slightest pressure. That I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing, though. Uh, knows when to throw the ball away, loves to run and play outside of a structure, which is eh, three-quarter fast and smooth throwing motion. I'm going to take McMullen. Cameron McMullen is ours, and he's a hidden quarterback. Look at this man, 92 throw power, 94 change the direction of course you would love to change that speed with the excel but that's an absolute win of course that was a very good selection we have the quarterback of the future and we have no second round pick what did they do with that pick excuse me um tennessee what was that about oh yeah was that for julio i think that was for julio yeah, fair enough you can you know what good decision <laughs> you can you can have that decision I think we're going to go down and try to get uh, Dante Hendricks, who round two to three, I would think that's a late second, so maybe pick 19, we'll see. We need the safety, but Hooker's going to be coming back from injury, so he could just come back in. He's pretty young, so yeah, we'll go to 20, and if, if the safety somehow there still as well, we're going to have a tough decision on our hands, because tight end is important, and we have no uh, you know replacement right this instant which actually kind of making me want to just trade up now. 
We really need a DT as well, which, I mean, we might have sold there, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Calvin Harris, good music. And I don't want to risk it anymore, especially to a team that kind of needs a tight end as well. A few tight ends, needy teams behind them. Let's go to Cardinals, see if we can offer them something. I have no idea. This is going to be another second-round pick <laughs> wasted here. Uh, second round and a fourth round, I guess. I don't know if that's even fair to them, but... I suppose we didn't show the most promise in the world, and they're willing to take it. A little debatable. I mean, it, it's a mid to late second anyway, so you know, taking a risk if you're them. But obviously here we have our favorites. Telfer is still there, but with the need being Dante Kendra or Hendricks and him being really solid looking, we have no starting tight end currently. Wait, what are these skills? One second. Injury sucks. Deep route's good. Injury sucks. I'm going to just take the risk on him. I don't care. And, uh, okay, so normal dev. Do not know his overall. Not the fastest in the world. Of course, we don't know what all the route running stuff is, but B, deep route. We may have sold. I will admit, we may have sold. So our next pick is in the third round. We have a DT that's like third to fourth. He could be gone, but if he's not, he will be mine. And he is gone, man. It is so hard to project where players are going to go, which makes sense, but it is annoying. Makes me want to be sad. We're a little desperate, but we're going to take Bobby Little. I did have him on my list, but I didn't grab him. I, you know, I didn't put him on my thing. So, decent strength. Speed's okay. Excel's okay. Normal dev. We don't know. There's so many normal dev DTs. We crushed it with the quarterback pick, which is not necessarily one of the biggest needs we had. But going forward, it's going to be a huge win. The guy looks absolutely nuts. Uh, and now we have a fifth-round pick, which, honestly, I don't know who would even be here. And apparently a few, actually. So... This would be a priority free agent. I think he looks good, though. Bryce Langford, you know, decent enough in the uh, athletics. A lead block that's really high. Of course, the others are looking a little sad, but we kind of need him. What about wide receiver, actually? Antoine Mackey. We have, like, almost no information on him. No juke move. What the hell? Whatever, Antoine Mackey it is. Normal development trait. Decently fast, which is kind of what you're aiming for. So, almost the perfect number three. A lot of normal devs, though. Which, I mean, even before the scouting update, I have noticed a lot of in next-gen. Don't know how it is on last-gen, but it seems like next-gen in general is kind of tougher. Uh, and we do see that our center's still there. He's a priority free agent. We're going to make him our priority right now. And he is an 87 strength guy. Do not know his, uh, his overall. Uh, we'll get to that afterwards. Once again, I do not know the, the logic in not showing it. When it, right afterwards, you get to see it in the draft recap. It's, I don't know. It's more fun to me when you see users uh, like looking at the draft if you have a 32-man league, and it's like, oh, 77, and then everyone trolls you if you get like a 67. Uh, but oh my, this was not a good draft. Dante uh, Hendricks is... So, does the potential matter for the accuracy of the, uh, the potentials? Because it said B deep route. How is 60 a B deep route? If I didn't see B deep route, I just don't draft him. Simply put, this DT turned out to be absolutely garbage, so that's a bust. The wide receiver obviously was pretty good. Antoine Mackey, uh, really good player actually. He has like almost every trait except for keep feeding bounds, which I don't even know if you can get from an AI player. And then this center, Bryce Langford, how good is he? Not super great while wow, we sold. We did not get any linemen. Cameron McMullen, of course, uh, really solid player. But outside of that, we sold on the draft, which, I mean, is that the direction now? I mean, you're not supposed to get, like, four or five super god-tier hiddens, right? Start of element trait, not bad. It'll be the future soon enough, I suppose. It's kind of what the future is. But I am curious to see kind of some of the guys we miss. Where was that safety, Kerr? He went number 11. Wow, that is high. Falcons took him. Not a bad player, but obviously, you know, not, nor, uh, not hidden, so I'm not really too crazy about it. Uh, what about the second round? Driscoll, I believe, was one of the guys we had. Normal development DT. Obviously better than our guy by a mile, but still. Um, Joe Johnson, Rudy Long. was There was like one more guy, wasn't there? Telfer, here's one. Brandon Telfer would have been a bust as well. So, I mean, the draft just seems like it's kind of hard to succeed at at times. Just, just putting that out there. Let's take a look if tight end actually was anything decent outside of the one guy in the first round. So for tight end, the highest overall was a 71, and he wasn't even hidden, so just a bunch of L's. I don't know, I like the fact that drafting's harder, but as far as rebuilds go, this is uh, a bit of a challenge. It's a bit of a challenge. 
So we have some re-signings. Rashawn Evans was supposed to be signed. Didn't get that done. But A.J. Brown, the real question is, can we afford everyone? A.J. Brown is a guy that will be here for the future, whereas I don't know so much about Julio. Like, how long does he have left? A.J. Brown, four-year deal, so he'll be 29. Jeffrey Simmons, we are desperate for the defensive line position, so that's what we're going to go for. Uh, we're a little bit broke, though. You know, we have to pay Saffold, who, I mean, might even just retire on us. Nate Davis is a guy that we're going to have to give a long-term deal to. Uh, I mean, if we can get rid of Tanhill next season, maybe we clutch up and save the money. I don't know, but uh, Amani Hooker might need a contract here, too, because, I mean, obviously he does, but do we pay him? Uh, safety really didn't go uh, super well for us. We'll give him the two-year deal. We'll give him a two-year deal, and worse, he starts. At best, we get a replacement for him. And Rashawn Evans, like I said, should have been signed. We're going to give him the deal here. Considering how year one went, this is going to be a shocking season to you. We went 5-12. and 12. Good job, yay. Of course, I put the rookie quarterback in because Tannehill was playing like garbage. I have no idea if the rookie quarterback did well. We got a couple of wins near the end of the season. Got to love when that happens because that clearly helps us so much by knocking us out of potentially the number one overall pick. Uh, 32nd, 31st, that's obviously going to happen. About the same, I guess. I mean, not really crazy different for a rookie to jump into a wildfire like that and play just as bad or just as good, if you will say, as the guy that was playing previously who's a long-term veteran. I can't really say that that was bad, right? Hendricks could go to star. A.J. Brown should go to superstar, which would be clutch. And the offensive line was Awful. Maybe that was the reason why we sucked, I guess. We didn't really improve the O-line. We actually deproved it. That's... Yeah, I don't think that's a word. Uh, the kicker was awful. Did we... Oh, yeah, we needed a new kicker, but Randy Bullock was so bad that I forgot about needing to replace him. I just... I forgot. Like, he was just so bad that I didn't even think of him as a player that needed to. And we did get Rookie of the Year because the rookie class was kind of weak in general and specifically for the AFC side, so... You know, that gives him an XP boost, obviously, and ultimately it doesn't really matter because uh, he's not going to get a dev up from it. We are also broke as a joke. Hopefully we can get rid of Tannehill because if we can, it'll save us so hard. And if not, well, we just took the L. That's about it. Tampa versus the Chiefs rematch is here, and the winner of this one is the Chiefs. They get their revenge. Also, we have 20 mil, apparently. That's a win. I'll take it. Of course, speaking of Tannehill, though, please let me get rid of you. Please. That's good enough for me. That works out for me. Dupree, of course, is not going to be able to be released because, of course, they gave him 33 mil guaranteed because that's what I would do if I was them if I saw that name there. <laughs> Yikes. Julio Jones, this is kind of the window. And it's kind of sucky because, like, we have a rookie quarterback that really have a, you know, a chance to play his rookie year Starting for Tannehill here in a run-heavy scheme, which isn't the worst case for him, but, you know, we need something, you know? Like, Derrick Henry isn't good enough, apparently, to carry us to the promised land here, so we need some juice. I I'm not really sure what we do. Maybe get a little bit better on the offensive line, but overall, I mean, what else can I say, really? Like, just try just get some linemen. But yeah, we got to trade off Tannehill, maybe try to find, like, a something for a third-round pick or something like that. Players like, what the hell is that? Is that a new one? Is it like a book? It's like a page of something. Brett Kern, I mean, he's he's kind of past his prime. Like, that's that's kind of rookie numbers for ratings. Uh, Aaron Brewer, we'll maybe get him back. These are all backups. We get a third and a fourth off of the Falcons for Ryan Tannehill. I also did not see if we had any dev ups. Let's take a look if we did. Uh, I, I would imagine we didn't have a single one. Maybe the tight end. And he did. He went up to star. Once again, a few of you guys have been uh, a little surprised by it. You're like, didn't we just talk about how, you know, tight ends don't go up in dev? Tight ends do go up in dev. Normal the star and uh, superstar to X-Factor, but star to a superstar for some reason is completely broken, and I have no clue as to why. Uh, of course, AJ Brown also went up in dev, which is clutch because he just got a four-year deal, I believe. No, maybe it would have been five-year. How old is he? Whatever got, gets him to 29. So, yeah, four-year deal. Uh, defensively, so pretty good on the offensive side. Defensively, we did not get a single dev up, unfortunately. But uh, it's still like you know the team improved, I suppose. With our overall still 81, that's a bit of an L. But let's take a look. We have about 50 mil to work with. It seems get a couple of linemen, and maybe we're back in it. Ooh, T.J. Hawkinson. 
Hendrick played well, though. I think you just let Hendricks play it out, to be honest. But this is the kind of name you maybe spend 20 a mil per year on, right? Like, eh, someone proven, I guess. So we offered on some free agents. Did we get any of them is the question. There's a couple of guys uh, or teams bidding on them. And we got Williams, Hudson, and Sheldon Richardson. So improving the trenches on both sides of the field. Obviously massive. Uh, Taylor Lewan could be gone soon too. So we fix our offensive line. It should be absolutely perfectly fine now. Jonah Williams is going to be moving over to the right tackle spot. Uh, and then, uh, oh, should he? I mean, we kind of paid him for left tackle money. Taylor Lewan has been pretty good as a left tackle, but you know what? Screw it. Right tackle. Uh, he has been a little shaky over the years, you know, can, inconsistent problems or inconsistency problems. Uh, so right tackle, maybe a little bit of an easier role for him anyways. And like I said, I think we have our, oh, we need a left guard too. God damn, that hurts. But okay, fair enough. Maybe we'll draft one. So we have pro day results. Do we have any favorites? We have no favorites. Really? That's an L. So we went 5-12. and 12. What does that get you in the draft this season? Please be a top five pick. Number three. There's a lot of really good players there. There's a corner up there. I don't know if I want one, though. Shelton Crosby and then a quarterback. So this is a decision now. Oh, is it? No, it's paused. So this is a decision now. What do you want to do? Um, I don't know what I want to do, honestly. Uh, cornerback Presley looks absolutely insane. Uh, I forgot. Can I not move this up? Okay, so I forgot that uh, we had... What's this called? I forgot that we had a top-tier pick. This guy looks really solid with that 40 time. I don't know if I can put my eggs in that basket, especially when you consider the fact that... Well, can I really not move these guys around? That's really awesome. Uh, especially when you consider the fact that we have multiple needs. Uh, we could probably take Brian Coleman on top of uh, the DT if we just make a trade down. Of course, you can see here we're lacking a little bit of information here, but we also have B-man coverage, so... I'm thinking we trade down to pick 18 and uh, grab multiple players rather than one. Hopefully, this is the right call. No second-round pick, of course, so obviously that trade worked out for them plenty. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we're going to try to find a trade here that works out for us because if we're not going to be trading at pick 18, then we're going to need to make multiple trades to make that play. So the, the Panthers already are kind of winning here. And the, look at this. This is totally fair. Pick three. EA. They're moving to pick three from the mid-twenties. This is absolutely fair. And you're you're messing it up. You're selling. Like, we're not going to get the fair value here. This is, a, this is a massive L. Let's just see if there's some trade that, you know, the AI is making with us that's even remotely fair. I doubt it, but maybe. Pick three overall is so massive. It's insane. And the game isn't valuing it. The best I can do is try to just cheese it down the line here. It's it's really the only thing I can think of. Let's see who Chicago takes. And they take a quarterback. That could have been any one of you teams trying to trade up. But no, we're not going to do that, are we? And hell, that third round probably wasn't even like, you know, crazy. That was actually probably very fair. And we're going to do it again. We're going to move down again. It's like the only thing I could do to try and gather stuff even remotely close to what that pick was worth. And once again, another really good pick, Presley. Or I would assume another very good pick because obviously he was one of the guys I was willing to take. And now we're kind of getting to where it's it's kind of fair. So I'm going to take the Panthers offer here now and uh, make that play. We should have gotten so much more. It hurts, but what am I supposed to do? I hope they got cucked. And Max Bishop, I have no idea. I think they mentioned him. I don't know how good he was, though. And with pick 17, let's see what we need. So cornerback's up there, but DT is still by far the biggest need we have. Um, but I don't know when that DT goes. A mid for we have two DTs here. To be fair, I think we're to make a play. We're gonna let the first DT go. So this could be a bit of an L. But this Coleman guy looks really solid. You have that B man uh, man coverage. I'm gonna risk it here. Brian Coleman, please be a god. And of course he's normal. Of course, looking at the speed and all that though, I'd have to imagine he's good. But we'll see. We trade uh, two-thirds this and a third next year for pick 25 from the Dolphins, which, of course, will be our DT here. We have a decent bit for next year, but kind of wanted to get something going for this year, so we'll see. Um, going to the favorites, Earl Lewis, I think, is my choice. 
looking at how he performed, he's a six foot six guy with 38 bench press reps, a 484. His skills show a, uh, a B hit power, a B awareness, B play rec. Didn't get to fully scout him because uh, the game glitched out on me. Well, I don't know if it glitched out, but I clicked B uh, on accident to try and like see who we were looking for. Kind of sold there. This is who we're going to take, Earl Lewis. He's our number one. And he's hidden. Thank you. Please give me more of these. Hopefully he's good, but hidden development trade, automatic starter. I'm loving it. We trade 56 and 99 next for 48, which will be a center. This guy looks like a really good player. Obviously, we're kind of limited on a lot of the scouting stuff, which I can't tell if I'm selling or if that's the way the game is now, which I think it is a little bit of both, to be honest. <laughs> but Donnie Teague, from what I can see, 6'3", 21, uh, decent bench press reps, especially for a smaller guy. But look at these. A for run block finesse. A for run block power, A for pass block, and A for pass block finesse. If he's not good, I give up understanding the, the new scouting. I don't know. And he is good. Okay, I think. He's obviously hidden. His strength is actually a little bit lower than I thought. Maybe 86, 87. But fair enough. We, we've, tur we've turned the draft around a little bit. So we trade two fourths and a fifth for pick 70 from the Vikings where we're going to be taking another DT. The guy had a B power move uh, potential. He had decent uh, bench press. He's young. I will say, though, he is... Who is this? It's a left tackle, round one to two. Why is he... Uh, why does no one like him? Okay, he does kind of suck. But uh, I will say uh, he is on the slower side, so I have no idea. But I like it. Joey Barner, I'm going to take the chance on him. And we're going to get ourselves... Uh, I wouldn't be able to tell you yet. Once again, I don't I don't think it matters to hide the overall. I really don't get the reason for that. Like, is that a glitch? Like, surely that's not intended, right? Maybe it's just to, like, make it where you can't just stack up on a position because you're like, oh, well, that guy wasn't good. That could be it, too, I suppose. And this guy is at day three. We're technically in day three, so I'm going to take a Matthew Dixon. And I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know what his overall is, but with the potentials I've seen... I don't know how he's not at least in the 70s if he's not hidden. I thought he was going to be a clear-cut 7 uh, hidden, and he wasn't. But I suppose we landed a few hiddens. We landed a few what seems to be good players, just not hidden. Uh, we'll see, obviously. We'll only know. I mean, obviously, last draft was kind of bad. I thought it was going to be pretty decent, but it was not. We're kind of reaching hard here, but Deshaun Williams is a second- to third-round projected guy. We're in the sixth round now. I'm taking the shot. And I should not have taken the shot. And we're going to take a potential new starting kicker, David Woods. Let's see what we get. A normal development, 87 kick power with the highest bench press. I will say, doing it this way, it is a little more fun for the big reveal. Let's see what we got. The big reveal. Hey, like I said, I felt he was a good corner. Just didn't have hidden. That's a win of a draft pick. Of course, will he start right away? No, he will not. But down the line, for sure. Two hidden development traits. Uh, Barner ended up being a 70 overall. This is one of those classic, like, uh, you know, he's a steal, but he's not hidden. What can he really do for us type of things? Uh, Matthew Dixon, once again, wasn't hidden, but was a good player. Obviously, very good for his overall. Probably just a backup for us, though. I'll just be honest with you. Uh, what else do we have? We have Donnie Teague, who is a 74 overall. Uh, ratings are pretty good. Strength's a little low, but let's take a look at the development trait. I think he can play left guard for us. We actually kind of clutched up here. We needed a starter, and we got one. Thankfully, we clutched up. Start of element trade. And then the DT, who is automatically a starter at a 6'6". Six, six, I'd say just pure DT. Maybe move Sheldon on the interior, even though I think Sheldon might weigh more, so we'll see. Uh, but the DT, Earl Lewis, is a superstar. Uh, that is a win. I will take that. Of course, we only have 190 number, which is great. Let's take a look at that corner. I mean, it's it's simply put, that was the, uh, the guy we were going to take. Presley, oh, hit and development trade, 79 overall, looking very scrumptious. I don't know why I said that, but i that's the word I use, so uh, take it or leave it. Everyone's like, leave it, please, leave it. Oh. Hmm. I wish I didn't leave it. Ah. No, yeah. All right, I mean, there's that. X-Factor, my favorite. And more than ever, now with the uh, the new scouting, I cannot remember any of the names we may have had, you know, that we just passed on, so 
you know, this is going to be more of a common theme where we're not going to be looking at players too much because I'm just not going to remember them. They're not going to be memorable because I'm going to be manually clicking in and out of so many different players. It's going to pain me. But yeah, we got rid of a lot of expensive contracts. We still have Bud Dupree. I wish we would have got an outside linebacker actually, but we didn't or just some sort of pass rusher to play that spot anyways. Bud Dupree, yay, hey, hey, that's my guy, Bud Dupree. Not very good, but he's worth a lot of money. That's my song. You know, don't copyright it. Or I'll copyright it. One of something like that. Of course, you think you have all the numbers correct for your roster, and then they give you like 400 wide receivers. Also, uh, this kind of reminds me of Raiders offseason. It was going to be a planned upload for that to be today, but I was like, you know what? I want to do a rebuild with a new scouting. Give it a give it a test whirl beforehand, uh, just so we can be you know get a little bit more info on that. So tomorrow that'll be uh, uploaded, and then we'll probably end up doing the uh, Jordan Ruse. Is that like Michael Ruse's like brother or something? Who I believe was also a Titan, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but obviously uh, we'll do a preseason stream on twitch.tv slash jumpy here tomorrow uh, later on in the day, probably about 10 p.m. Central Standard Time on Twitch. Like I said. Uh, after the upload, of course, and once again, a Sheldon. No, so Sheldon isn't really a DT or a, a nose tackle type. So neither is the other guy, but he's big, he's tall. So I mean, I'll allow it. Sheldon will be the left end. So we did improve the team quite a bit, but is it enough? I mean, we were literally one of the worst teams in the entire league. So it would have taken a lot. I don't know if we did that. Oh, Bud Dupree. Is that a differential between the savings and penalty I see? Wow, that sure is something. So here's the team for year three. Of course, McMullen is massive. Uh, he has massive amounts of potential. A, a really talented uh, player, obviously, with uh, great throw power and great speed and all that. And uh, his ratings are pretty decent. Uh, wide receivers, Julio Jones is on the regression side. AJ Brown is on the upside. Ke uh, Hendricks is also on the upside. O-line, though, we have to get a new right tackle and probably center this upcoming season defensively. Uh, Landry looks great. Middle linebackers look great. Uh, Dupree needs to be replaced. Corners look fine. D-line, you replace Richardson, you replace Hooker, and you're kind of good. Ooh, Derrick Henry. You got to pay Derrick Henry, right? Like, you, even though it's a four-year deal, uh, you got to pay him. You just have to. He's like the guy. Julio Jones, I can't say you have to. Uh, Christian Fulton, What's he, what's he looking like? So he's a uh, pretty good man, pretty decently fast, six foot tall. A five-year 40 is about fair for his talent, right? And he has still some years to go. He could become a god. You never know. Uh, Taylor Lewan could get the re-signing. Same with Hudson. It kind of depends on how good they are. Same with Julio. If I could just turn this into a one-year, if I could just give him a fully guaranteed one-year 16, I'd be about it because I, I think he'll be good for one more year, but I don't know about after that. This is, I don't think that's true, sir. I gotta say, thank God for this trash division division because I don't understand it. I don't get what we're doing wrong here. I, I, what are we doing? Like, what are we doing here, EA? Excuse me, but uh, do you guys enjoy watching me fail at the scouting? Uh, is that what it is, EA? Like, why are we sucking so bad? Is the Titans just have like a really bad schedule or a really hard schedule every season? So they play their own division and they barely, they got like six wins each. How? I don't understand it. Of course, McMullen, not bad. Could go to Superstar. Uh, Henry, yards are down a little bit because we changed the scheme up. And you can see it works out tremendously well because obviously a lot of guys over 1,000 yards. Mackey goes to Star probably. Really strange that he did, though. Um, looking at the defensive numbers, uh, my boy Harold Landry has been absolutely worth every penny. He's been a god. Dupree is not. Uh, picks are low. Braden Mann was not supposed to be the kicker, but the kickoff sender... But sure, I mean, it seemed to work out, I guess. Uh, eighth in offensive yardage. Once again, I don't know how we went negative. Uh, the MVR, ah, sure, to the Buccaneers, as you would expect. Uh, any awards at all for us? No. Mackey, best wide receiver. And that appears to be it. Nice. But you know what? You know what? We're in the postseason. We're just as good as their overall. Anything can happen. If we get to the Super Bowl, I'm calling it a victory. That's that's about it. Because we're about to lose Julio. We're going to lose Derrick Henry soon. We're about to lose two starting linemen. I, I know it's only a three-year at this point, but this is kind of looking like it's going to reset again soon. Especially with how we draft now with a new scouting update. This is going to be interesting. So 
I'm, even though we're 8-9, I really hope we win it all here, which would be pretty impressive, to be fair. You kind of have to respect it if we did. Although, the uh, the Browns are making it very hard on us. I will say, we're kind of doing well, all things considered. Down 6, start the second half, and we are down by 6 still. We get a field goal again. They do not. Defense is trying, but offense has got to give them something. Up for the end of the game. You get a touch on your win, or you just clock them. Having Derrick Henry in this ground game is elite. Of course, Cameron McMullen uh, outperformed Baker Mayfield. Uh, Derrick Henry did okay. They kind of maybe ran him into the ground a little too hard. Obviously, Chubb went crazy, especially with that huge run he had. Um, I think we're just lacking speed. I really do. Like, across the board, this team is kind of slow, right? Like, outside of uh, Farley, there's really not much speed on this team, like, at all. Like, Jayon's decently fast, I suppose, but everyone's about as expected for their position, right? And I suppose Harold Landry's okay, and I don't want to say Bud Dupree because, yeah, he's fast, but he's really bad. <laughs> he's, he's not very good. Glad we paid Harold. It was worth every penny. And the Bengals, who are only at 12, or they're only an 86 overall, but they're 12 and 5. Explain to me, A, what they have that we don't. And they have a harder division. So I don't, I, I guess we only play our division. I mean, we play our division pretty much so, though. I don't know, man. Unless we lost our division, I, I, I can't tell you. I really don't know what's going on around here. But I have a chance to win it all, so we'll, we'll just roll with it. 7 to 0, 7 to 7. Uh, second quarter still 10 to 7, 10 to 14. Come on, Titans. We take so long to move down the field. You have to score when you get there. And, I mean, you can't ask for much more from if you're the offense. What can you ask for? The defense is giving you a chance, and you're selling. The punter even gave you a chance with an insane punt. Come on, offense. Wake up. Use Derrick Henry. I don't care. Touchdown. And, of course, the Bengals will react with their own touchdown. We are 3rd and 21. Let's run the ball. Okay. Uh, and they get the field goal. Way to go. <laughs> what a bunch of bull crap. This team, dude. 3rd and 21. I get you get the clock rolling, but, like, how? How are we always going backwards? It's the Bengals. Who do they have? Like, who is on their defense? Mike Hilton. Bobby Wagner's a corpse at this rate. Trey Hendrickson, maybe he's okay, I guess. Bates, cool. DT, not great. Hubbard, not great. Brian Poole, not great. We're just getting beat by teams that Jarsa aren't as good as us. It's just simple fact. The Bengals have us going backwards. You have Derrick Henry. You have a really good ground game. It's right before, uh, you know, what seemed to be overtime. I can't tell. They actually might have been losing. Wait, they were losing, actually. We went backwards 10 plus yards when they were losing. Wait, what? This team is trash because they would have kicked the field goal. They didn't get a safety to win. That last play must have been uh, a field goal, right? No shot. Oh my God, we lost. I, I don't know, dude. <laughs> Good coaching game. Lost 10 yards when we just had to clock them. You just run forward, and maybe that's a alone is enough. Of course, it doesn't matter as the Chiefs are in the Super Bowl again as we're headed on to year four and see if we can make something happen. As We do have a pretty good overall now. The Chiefs win the Super Bowl after all. Let's take a look if we had any dev-ups. Offensively, the quarterback does go to uh, Superstar, obviously. 24 years old. The ratings are very high already. Uh, what about Julio? He's still usable. But can we keep him on the team for relatively cheap? I don't think so. I really don't. I think we're going to lose him here. Uh, defensively, Bud Dupree goes a superstar. That means so much to me. I, I'm so thankful. Thank you, dude. I'm really going to be thankful when we release you. And he, he, Yeah, we can, but it's not really saving a lot. I still probably will, though, if we find someone in free agency or something like that. But, man, okay. I mean, we also went with the AI scouting. I don't know if it actually does AI. I put it on auto, but... I don't know if that actually did anything, because, I mean, it still prompted me every time, so I'm not 100% sure if that actually does anything anymore. And retirements kind of looked weird there, so maybe we actually had one. Uh, where is our retirements? Rodney Hudson is one of the guys, and that's the only guy, but need to replace the center. Taylor Lewan, I don't even know if he was on the list of guys we need to resign. Probably was, and I just didn't do it. 78 overall. I can't do that, dude. We have money. I am willing to give Julio Jones 
a one year literally guaranteed. 16 mil, he wants 13. That that makes no sense. I'm gonna tag and I'm gonna adjust him. I we we didn't play well. We went eight and nine. We won a playoff game though. You know, Julio Jones was pretty patient with the Falcons for all those years. I think he should re-sign for a one-year 16 easily, right? So I'm going to tag him, adjust it to a one-year 16. It's only fair. Okay, and we're going to get a new kicker, going to get a new tackle. We're going to spend some money here. Hopefully don't bankrupt ourselves, but at the same time, you got to risk it a little bit as clearly playing it safe isn't working. And we'll give him a little more money than that, actually. 66 mil. We could use an elite corner. That would help a lot. Uh, Fletcher Cox. I've tried to get this man a few times. I think I've gotten him once out of like three or four tries. This is a guy that could help us out immediately. It's one of our biggest positional needs. The Chiefs are a competitor of ours on top of it. So I'm willing to pay out a little extra money just to try and guarantee him to ourselves. And more importantly, guarantee them, guarantee him against them. Which once again, I think is technically the most important thing of this entire thing. Uh, Demarcus Lawrence, not an ed, I mean, not like an outside guy, so probably not going to go for him. Rugs, I mean, there's some decent names here. We'll see. We're going to try to keep it safe. Uh, but if there's a, a guy that I feel like is going to be able to put us over the edge here, then I might have to just spend. Especially since a lot of these guys are going to be one years anyways. Come on, this is huge. This is huge. Give us some players. Yo, or we'll wait. Rejected Gilmore, which is a bit of an L, but not necessarily surprising. We offered him, I don't know, probably about like seven or eight more points than the next team. Uh, Fletcher Cox, a huge addition. Uh, and then Lake and Tomlinson, probably primed to play center. Tried to get uh, Taylor Lewan back on a one year six. Not super interested. We'll see if we can try to put a little bit more on and maybe he'll uh, actually join us. Damn it, the freaking Texans. Do I risk us actually drafting well? I don't think so, dude. I think we just... I mean, especially a division rival. Not that the Texans are like a competitor technically, but uh, unless they're offering crazy, I'll give him the one-year nine, I guess. He's still good enough to stay for one more year. Well, he could do a two-year 14 for Austin Jackson, even though I think he's kind on the rough side. Oh, he's awful. So, if we were to take a look at what our position of need is the most, it would probably be some sort of tackle. Uh, at this point, we have more projections for our center and guard spot, so that might be something we do instead. Uh, pretty good there. A uh, little rough around the edges. Maybe worth taking, but I'm not a huge fan of him. I'll put him on the list, but yeah, not a huge fan of him. Uh, Jared Donald... Uh, pretty good reps, really rough-looking potentials, so I, I don't think I would go for him. Uh, we have Deshaun Tatum, uh, pretty good bench press, not the most athletic, looking also pretty rough. I don't think I would take a risk on him. Ben Fulcher, so 23, unfortunately. Huge guard, though, absolute anchor. Uh, a lot of question marks, but better than the other two, so maybe if he's there, you take him. Uh, but I'm not a huge fan of that player either, so... Offensive line looking very weak right now. In general, it looks really weak. Like, they're just not good players. This guy could be worth taking a risk on. A, awareness, A, impact. But D, injury, C, run block. I mean, that's that's a close call. Put him on the list for now just in case we're desperate. But, you know, that's that's tough. And anytime I see a D right out the gate, I'm just, I'm out of there. I'm not, I don't roll that way. Maybe experiment a little bit, but I i mean, I'm, that's thats not what I'm aiming at. All right, do we get any other players or not? We got Lawan. That's a huge win, actually. And we have three players to do a private workout for. There is a left end named Warwick, who's not necessarily an edge rusher for a 3-4, but maybe he's just that much of a god. 6'6", 271. Looks like he probably runs maybe like an 82, 83 speed at best. A little heavy, you know, kind of gives me Preston Smith vibes, but... Just fast enough, I think. Just athletic enough to get the job done. Uh, and then we did have some other guys that were favorites. Uh, ben Fulcher. We could put some linemen on there. I really actually wanted to look at the wide receivers. Franklin and Wilkins looked really good. Um, <sighs> safety. I mean, he's kind of just out of the random. I'm going to go with Jordan Cannon, who I think was kind of like a DT type. Uh, and then I think who, which one of the wide receivers... Uh, Franklin's a little closer, so I suppose we'll go with Franklin. Those are the three we want. Or let's see if they show us, because sometimes it actually glitches out for us for whatever reason. 
Show us the money. We obviously need to replace Julio Jones, so uh, that's kind of the reason why we're looking at wide receiver. Come on. This could be just a four-year rebuild, whether we make it to the Super Bowl or not, because losing Julio, potentially losing Kevin Byard, who's 31 now, uh, some other players on the offensive line, I don't see us getting better. So, I mean, once the quarterback just goes off or something, I, I don't know. This could be kind of a quote-unquote failed rebuild. Let's take a look at the prospects, though. Uh, did we actually get our bump? And we did. So Tyree Franklin, 95% scouted. Not fully, but very close. Decent enough speed. Catching's great. Short route's pretty good. Run blocks back. He's not looking like a can't-miss type of player. Fast enough, though, with a three-cone of the 20. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, what else do we have? So we did not put Warwick on there. I swear I put Warwick, dude. Come on, man. Did EA just cuck me? I think I still have to risk it on him, though. Jordan Cannon, uh, not 100%, but 99, and he looks like a god. Not looking bad at all. It's kind of a DT type. He's, you can't, you cannot miss on this guy. That's like a late uh, second. We got cucked on Warwick. I think I might still take him just because, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't have any other options. He's really the best case, and I'm just hoping, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I'm just, we're going to sell, aren't we? Because uh, he looks okay, but we don't know a lot on him. That's why I literally chose him. Unless I sold, which I don't think I did. I don't sell that often. I actually do, but I, I didn't in this case, I don't think. Pick 25. Is that the only pick we have? We should have two first rounds, right? Uh, so our favorites, Mr. Franklin's round 1 to 2, round 1 to 2, round 1 to 2. I still think he probably trade up to 20. That that cannon guy, even though he's not the biggest need for us, is a guy you just cannot let go. Like he's, I mean, A, a for... I mean, this guy's got an, you know, a drinking problem. It's, I'm not going to judge him for it, but that's literally how good he is. To cause the opposing team to have a drinking problem. I don't know. I'm just saying words at this point. At this point, the tediousness of all of this, I haven't even been paying attention really to the actual trade value thing. Of course, we've been cucked multiple times. This seems fair, though, that it'd probably actually benefit them. It wouldn't surprise me. Six spots, two-fourths. I mean, yeah, it's probably pretty fair. They probably actually lost a little bit. Uh, and Franklin went, which kind of scares me. Because if Franklin went, that that could very well mean bad things for us. And it did not, thankfully. Jordan Cannon looks like an absolute god. He's even better to play edge for us, technically. He's just heavy as hell, so I don't think I would. Can't be. He, he, he can't be a miss. 84 strength. What was his uh, thingy? Did I sell? Is he actually not a good player? Is he an edge rusher? He's, did they accidentally make him 317? Was he supposed to be 217? I'm so confusion. And you know what? I'm going to trade up for the other guy as well. I don't really know what to say. Was his, was his bench press really not that good? I thought it was good, to be fair. I don't remember actually looking at it now that I can recall. Whoops! <laughs> Yikes. So 29 to 22, 39. Ooh, 89 is not enough. So I don't know if that's fair or unfair, but obviously here they want more. So I'm cool with it. We are selling the entire draft for these two players. If that guy wasn't a guaranteed god, I don't know how this guy could be. But once again, we are absolutely desperate for an edge rusher. We're just going to take Zach. Are we going to take Zach Warwick? Let me, let me make sure that we are going to do this. Uh, Wilkins, I can't trust. Like very fast, but... You know, I'm not seeing anything else. That's literally all I'm seeing. Um, Chris Drew looks good. He's a, he's a center. All right, Zach Warwick, it is a tackle. Please be a god, dude. Just be a god. He's hitting a little slower than I thought. 82, 83, I would have said. But I suppose 4, 7, 3 is, you know, maybe I didn't see things right. 81 strength. Once again, he's on the edge for us. But really, Am I just seeing things? I swear. I swear we had better bench presses for these players. Obviously, editing me will know, and obviously you guys watching will know. So we trade up to the uh, Eagles. We give them fifth this, fifth next, and a sixth this for 97. We're going to be taking a wide receiver here. I can't remember his name. It's like Cortland or something. I don't even know, but I don't know what to think of the draft. I, I don't know. Cortland Matthews, it was Cortland very fast player, a little raw, and uh, yeah, very fast. Do not know how good he is, obviously, but I mean, that's really all I had. Need a wide receiver. He was the best by far available. Here we are. And I think with this pick, we're probably just going to take another stab at a kicker and see if it works out. Kickers, punters are very tough to snag. 
it's kind of just like let the guys practice a bunch, random guys off the street at times, and just hope for the best. Also, we could use a lineman. I know this guy looks really rough, but he could still be hidden, right? Six round guys that are projected in the first or the second. I'm taking them. Okay, you can't click X. That's embarrassing. Dion Farr. I can see why he fell kind of long in the draft. I have no idea how good that guy is, but he's a six round lineman. Backup. Doesn't matter. And the other corners there. Mid to... F I mean, I'll take this guy too. Physical specimen. What? How do they draft for me? I did not run out of time. He was trash. He was. He looked pretty fast, actually. He had like a 4.53, which is probably 88, 89 speed, but instead he didn't get that. And I suppose it's kicker time. A awareness? That's all I need to see, baby. Okay, maybe I need to see more. Skinner? That's really awful. Like, that is. Like, that's just not NFL. Like, they wouldn't be prospects to draft. Like, they just wouldn't. I don't care if they're undrafted, projected, or what. But, like, they just wouldn't be with that kick power. I'm sorry. It's just not the case. Uh, as far as the draft goes, Cannon was a very good player. But, unfortunately, uh, normal development traits. Obviously insane. Looks like an edge player. Maybe in a 4-3 it makes sense. But not in a 3-4, unfortunately. Zach Warwick, obviously an automatic outside linebacker. I believe Harold is a... I think he's a right out. I really hope he is, because otherwise I'm going to have to go back in here. And only star, a little bit of an L. Uh, and then that was pretty much it. The kicker was awful. Uh, all those players were awful. So I'm just going to take these L's real quick and uh, discard them. Who did I actually just release? I thought I was releasing the kicker first. Uh-oh. Wait, what? No. It doesn't. Okay, it doesn't. Uh, fair enough. We'll keep the other guys, whatever. Let's take a look at the wide receiver we're going to go for. Uh, Tyree Franklin, of course, hidden development trade. Decent speed and all. Uh, gives me slower, but pretty decent Antonio Brown vibes. I know it's only because he's a, a Buccaneer now and he's kind of similar size. Uh, start development trade, that's nothing special at all. And once again, like I said already once before, I cannot remember half the names, so I will ignore them. Ben Fulcher was one of them for sure, but... It wasn't the biggest need for us. Tatum was one of the names for sure. Hidden. Once again, not the biggest need this season. Pass rush was 100% the biggest need. So it is now year four. We are losing some players. Julio Jones is gone after this season no matter what. Derrick Henry, I don't know what his regression will be, but of course he is still pretty good and he's going strong. Uh, of course, A.J. Brown could regress soon too. 27, I think 28 might be the year if you're not an X-Factor that wide receivers regress uh, tight end, obviously, he's just getting going here. Uh, 78 overall. Uh, he's actually had a couple of decent seasons, and he's a decent route runner. I probably would have said that medium would have been the mo main focus, but obviously it seems like if you go for medium or deep, you usually get, you know, short anyways. Uh, but obviously a pretty good player. Uh, just, you know, trying to progress him. We're going to lose Lawan. We're going to lose Lakin Tomlinson after the season. Fletcher Cox may be gone. Um, Bayard may be so bad that he's not even starting caliber. I don't want to say that this is the season, because obviously we still have a couple of low overalls, but this is preferably the season you want to do it. All right, heads to the playoffs. Let's see if we're in them, and we actually have a pretty decent season here. Uh, the Jaguars also do, though. 13-4, 11-6, 9-8, and 8-9. And and the whole division kind of going. One last hurrah. Who is this for? Julio, maybe? And it is for Julio. Julio Jones is going to retire after the season. Whether he was or not, he was pretty much done with us. But, fair enough. Uh, let's take a look at the stats and awards. Cameron McMullen on the top of the leaderboards here for yards. Touchdowns, not bad. Uh, interceptions, a little low. And, wait! I had a scenario for Derrick Henry, but they didn't mention anything. Like, he didn't, re he didn't come back to me about anything. He must have just retired. Derrick Henry retired on us. Oh, my. Well, last hurrah it is. A.J. Brown, really good season. Julio Jones, not bad. Uh, Hendricks, pretty damn good himself. Uh, offensive line play, fair enough. Damn. Okay, well, that sucks. Harold Landry did really well. Cox, pretty solid. Simmons, really solid. Warwick, really good for a rookie year. We obviously see that usually our rookies are just terrible on the edge. Uh, decent pick numbers. Will Lutz was our free agent signing for kicker. Was pretty decent, actually. Okay, so we must have, to be fair, I simmed like week 13 or so. Wait, did I forget to redo re-signings? I think I forgot to do re-signings. That's a bit of an L. Whoops. 
Uh, but yeah, I, I, week 13 or so, I just simmed to the playoffs. I was just like, whatever, A.J. Brown with the uh, winner of the wide receiver award. And we get to play the Jets. Of course, first things first, I did not once again know that Derrick Henry was gone. So I am going to be looking for another running back. We need somebody to back up uh, Kenyon Drake. And this guy, Spurlock. Interesting. Why is he here? Is he not good or something? I would love to get a trucking style back. So maybe Michael Carter. I think he would be a decent player. Looks pretty good. We'll take him. If we okay, so a hundred percent, we're not doing another season if we lose to the Jets. I don't know what the scenario is for doing another season, but if we lose to the Jets, it's a GG. I'm out of here. Our scheme is built more towards passing as well, so can't say, oh well, no Derrick Henry. That's why. No, I I kind of changed it up a little bit because Derrick Henry carrying us wasn't carrying us very far. Uh, as I don't even know who the hell is out the gate here. So right to left is them. 3-0 against the Jets. This is this is fantastic. 10-0, 17-0, halftime, uh, all tied up at 17. Uh, well, not all tied up. 17-0. I was going to say tied up as in, like, the score didn't change. 24-13. And not a pretty win, but we did, we did just good enough or just well enough, and we got the victory. We move on to the next round. Kenyon Drake really not playing that well, especially considering Derrick Henry would have been like twice as good. Fletcher Cox crushed it. Uh, some pretty good sack numbers in general for us. Both kickers missed. Uh, their guy got blocked, though. I don't know if that was an extra point or just a block in general, but their guy got blocked, so he has an excuse at least. One last hurrah. I suppose we'll continue this, uh, get the morale boost while we can. Two more wins. We're in the Super Bowl. We're really rallying around the boys, around Julio, something. So who do we go against this time? It is the Jaguars, who are a better, uh, not when it's a roster, but a better uh, record. But we, of course, are the better roster. Uh, they do have Devontae Adams, which is massive in fairness. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, they also got Gilmore. I think. It might have been the Eagles that Gil got Gilmore. I can't remember. But I remember seeing him recently enough. Maybe it was the Eagles. I don't know, but... Was that the Chiefs on the bottom going on the next round? It was. Is that what that was? 7-0. Jaguars starting off hot. 10-0 now. We get a touchdown at least. 10-7. Still 10-7. 17-7. And we are, we've are. we already lost. We've simply lost. 24-7. 27-7. I, I don't know what's happening. I really could not tell you. Oh, yeah. Now we're going to wake up. It's It's a little too late for that, pal. Is this for real? Like, I'm confused. I'm legitimately just simming. I, I don't I don't know. I don't get it. How do you get smoked when you're the better roster? I don't get it. And we lost a lot of overall losing Henry. Which we shouldn't lose Henry. We only lost him because we are losing games we shouldn't lose. Simply put. I'm simming. If we win or lose, I don't care. We're going to go on regardless. And that's a GG. That's the rebuild. I EA, EA took the cake on this one. We built a pretty cool roster, I suppose. I like the players that we got. I think we built it up about as well as we could, you know, especially trying out the scouting for the first time. This could be the way, you know, every rebuild goes, whether it's mine or someone else's. We do have a lot of money, though, so maybe I will take a look at free agency before I, before I call it completely quits here. Um, let's take a look at the defense. So, I mean, it's a really talented roster, so we'll see. We'll see. We'll go to we'll go to free agency and maybe do one more year. But if there's no one really that great, I'm gonna probably just call it there. Yeah, we lost a lot of players. That was a huge L. But obviously you could see a ton of money. And of course, the Bengals versus the Panthers. The one year it's not hard at all. Uh, great. Of course, I actually don't know if we have a lot of money, because once again, I think I did forget to resign players, so whoops. So we have not that many actually. So Fletcher Cox, I think if he wants it, he gets it. Simply put, he's uh, pretty solid. Let's offer more just so he stays. 13.4. Glad he got the deal done. A little surprised, honestly. Bayard's gone. Caleb Farley is a little bit older than I would have expected here, but a four-year deal. Boom. Uh, Taylor Lewan, Amani Hooker. I mean, at this point, <laughs> nah, we could probably get better. We could probably get better. We'll see. And that's kind of it. Everyone else is just, oh, wait, maybe they're not a backup. We're going to go with this man, Mr. Will Lutz. Go two-year. Didn't expect there to be... Uh, starters behind all these backups and there is definitely not enough players here to uh, build a championship roster 
Corner is not the biggest need. Aaron Donald is, I mean, he would be an improvement somewhere, but not a huge need for us. Wide receiver, I suppose Keenan Allen, but I mean, he's he's okay. Uh, the main issue would be tackle, and there's just no one there. Ultimately, it's just a bunch of has-beens, and they, there's just no way we can even get the roster to what we had it as. And of course, what we had it as was not enough. So maybe this will be a team that we do in the future for a reload, but it just didn't work out. I don't know what to tell you. It just didn't work out. And I, the big surprise to me was the fact that the corners didn't develop faster. I really thought they would have developed faster than they did. 85 overall, 86 overall. I know not everyone could just be a god, but I don't know. It just they didn't get to where I thought they would. Uh, Lewis developed pretty decently. He's 86 overall. He's obviously getting better as the seasons go on, even though he's just a main block shed type guy. Warwick actually did go to Superstar, which is super clutch. Yeah, this could be a fun team to do in the future for a reload, uh, but obviously losing the starting free safety and all that is kind of an L, so there's that. Obviously, the rookie quarterback, or the once upon a time rookie quarterback, went to X Factor here. Got to pay him on top of it, so you would have had to save probably like 50 or 60 mil anyways. So yeah, this is... This is just going to be chalked up as, quote-unquote, a failed rebuild, even though I think it's mainly EA's fault. Did Mackie already have Star? I don't remember. I don't know when he would have gotten it, but... Yeah, that's pretty much going to be it. Let me know what you guys thought. Uh, if you guys have actually used the scouting yourselves... Once again, I haven't paid attention to anyone else's scouting stuff. Maybe I will, just to confirm. But is it actually supposed to be kind of like where, uh, you know, the... What is it called? The, the potentials aren't guaranteed. Like, there's a lot of guys that are... It's like an A power move, but it actually turns out to be like 74 or something. And uh, is there supposed to be a lot of guys with like 40, 50% potential uh, shown? I think so. I'm pretty sure, but I also don't want to be a full salesman. So I, I want to make sure that I'm correct. I'll probably look up some more stuff just to guarantee it. But yeah, rebuilds seem to be more challenging and I'm not necessarily hating it. So let me know what you guys thought of this first of what would assume to be many uh, rebuilds in the future using the scouting update that not that we have a choice anyways uh, and yeah I think Sunday will be a Bears rebuild but I started it before this so I suppose I, it's kind of a coincidental ironic that I, I said that but we will have our final non-updated scouting rebuild on Sunday I think I started two seasons of it so the rest will be updated from there but yeah, that's about it. If you guys enjoyed this one, maybe leave a like, subscribe if you're new, follow me on Twitter, Jumpy Care, second channel, Picare Plays, and then twitch.tv slash Jumpy Care for streams, which once again will have tomorrow around 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, and uh, yeah, Raiders franchise, the off season will be tomorrow as well, probably around 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. Be there. It's going to be an interesting one. That's about it, though. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys, if you have any tips for me, scouting wise, or just anything at all, let me know. If you have an idea for a video, a challenge rebuild, a. Uh, the blast in the past player a re-simulation a career sim anything at all let me know i'm always uh, around and that's about it thanks for watching hope you guys come back for next video but until next video see ya